Good morning. We welcome all, whether you stream through our front door or stream through the internet, all are welcome and accepted and loved here. I'm excited this morning that we have a, uh, a guest pastor, Dr. Reverend Dr. Tom Martin, and I will be introducing him to you later. Uh, for our announcements, uh, first I want to do, I guess we can't do a big shout out because of masks, but a shout out to Aunt Verda. Uh, her 90th birthday was, I guess maybe 12 days ago. She has been joining us from New Mexico online since we started. And so I just say happy birthday, Aunt Verda. And if you're online, maybe you can type out a little note to her and let her know how much we appreciate the fact that she has been joining us faithfully for what, a year, a year and a half. Uh, the big news, of course, is the block party, which is September the 12th from 3 to 6 p.m. Uh, it's a rain or shine situation. Um, if the weather is bad, we're not going to all crowd in downstairs in the fellowship hall. So let us hope that the weather is nice or maybe just a gentle sprinkle. Uh, on that note, uh, we are looking for people with, who like to make ice cream and who have ice cream makers. Um, if you would let the church office know, uh, if you don't, are not able to come, and if you're willing to let us have your ice cream maker, uh, you know, that would be fine. Please let us know that too. Um, we are back to wearing masks again. I know nobody's really happy about that. But people, we're all in the same boat here. We all go work together. And if wearing a mask keeps us safe and keeps those we love safe, uh, or even strangers safe, uh, you know, let, let's wear the mask. Um, I think that's all the announcements we have. You've seen on the board, you've seen the, um, the birthdays. Um, so if you're on the card and uh, list or just want to send a birthday card, everybody likes getting birthday cards, so maybe you want to do that. Okay. Thank you. Good morning again. Okay, I'll pretend you're saying good morning back, okay? 
and I'd like to welcome this morning uh, our guest pastor, uh, the Reverend Dr. Thomas Martin. Uh, Dr. Martin grew up on a farm in Nebraska. He has lived in Oklahoma and the United Kingdom. He has taught at Midland Lutheran College, the University of Nebraska at Omaha, and since 2003 at Susquehanna University. He specializes in literary critical study of the New Testament text and is now a Lutheran pastor called the faculty at Susquehanna. And I have it on good authority from my Lutheran buddies that he is a terrific pastor. So we're very lucky to have him. Dr. Martin. Thank you. Good morning. It is good to be with you. Um, pastor Player and I live back doors to each other across the alley over here. On, uh, I'm on Orange Street, so he and I have been getting together through the summer um, every couple of weeks uh, for a beer um, on, on our deck or his front porch. So it's been really good to get to know him better after all the years that we've actually lived together up there. And it's good to be with you this morning. So who's hungry yet? Anybody thinking about dinner? Uh, the theme today is food, um, and specifically thinking about whether or not you want to munch on Jesus for dinner, okay? So let's wrap our heads around that um, and begin our worship. Thank you. 
As we think about listening to Jesus, digesting his words and taking them in, so much of our lifestyle gets in the way. And so as a confession to God, let us join in prayer. Unclutter our lives, Lord. We have too much. Consume too much. Expect too much. Grant us perspective to see this world through others' eyes than just our own. Grant us compassion where there is need to play our part and not turn aside. Grant us gratitude for what we have, our daily bread, the gift of life. Unclutter our lives, Lord, and give us space, simplicity, and thankful hearts. In Jesus, we are forgiven and made right with God and one another. Thank you, Lord, for loving us and forgiving us, even in our brokenness. Amen. Please join me in a prayer for illumination. Guide us, O God, by your word and Holy Spirit. <clears throat> then your light we may see light, in your truth find freedom, and in your will discover peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The gospel reading this morning is from John chapter 6, verses 52 through 69. And when I read it, I kind of identified with the one follower who basically said, this is a really hard saying, and I'm not really getting this. And I thought, amen, brother, it's not any better 2,000 years later for some of us. So please uh, listen to the words of Jesus. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, how can this mean, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who eats me will live because of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven, not such as the fathers ate and died. He who eats this bread will live forever. This he said in the synagogue as he taught at Capernaum. Many of his disciples, when they heard it, said, this is a hard saying, who can listen to it? But Jesus, knowing in himself that his disciples murmured it, said to, uh, said to them, do you take offense at this? Then what if you were to see the son of man ascending where he was before? It is the spirit that gives life, the flesh is of no avail. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But there are some of you that do not believe. 
For Jesus knew from the first who those were that did not believe and who it was that should betray him. And he said, this is why I told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by the Father. After this, many of his disciples drew back and no longer went about with him. Jesus said to the 12, will you also go away? And Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life, and we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. Here ends the reading. You ever had to eat your words? Sometimes you might use the phrase, yeah, I had to eat humble pie. Um, eating your own words can be rather difficult, correct? So in the, in the gospel lesson, um, Jesus has been talking about eating his body, but it's pretty clear when you get to the, the, the end of chapter 6 here, he's talking about eating his words. So what's it like to eat the words of Jesus? and to take them in. So, for several weeks now, the assigned gospel text for the Sunday mornings has come from the sixth chapter of John. It's a really long story, uh, and there's a huge dialogue between Jesus, the disciples, disgruntled church people, um, and, and today I'd like to try to bring that all to some sort of kind of final point that we're supposed to get out of this entire chapter. So, a recap. Chapter 6 in John starts off with the feeding of the 5,000, all right? Jesus is serving up some really good fish and chips on a beach along the Sea of Galilee, and people get their fill. Uh, and so, Jesus leaves. They follow him around the lake. Uh, maybe he's got even better food on the other side over there. What's, it, what's he going to serve up for the second course? And then the whole middle part of the chapter gets into this long dialogue uh, in which it becomes obvious that what Jesus is serving for the second course is himself. He is going to be food. I am bread. I am the living bread. I am the bread that comes down from heaven. Eat me and you will have eternal life. And all this, eat my body, drink my blood, draws a huge, yuck, gross, from the people who are listening to him and who are following him. It's just, it, the, whole, the whole story turns on this idea that people are imagining him to mean gross and literal cannibalism. Um, or perhaps that he's thinking about vampires. So I, I can't read this, eat my body and drink my blood without thinking of Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein, and you've got the classic vampire in there, I want to drink your blood. Um, that's the sort of turnoff people are having when they're listening to Jesus say this. Um, it actually gets me to thinking uh, what, what I hope is good humor that perhaps even Jesus himself would have laughed at. Um, but we, it gets us to what I call in class um, the Tommy Lee Jones Jesus. And I'm thinking here of the famous sci-fi film, Men in Black. All right, so you're with me? So at the end of the film, Tommy, the Tommy Lee Jones character is standing in front of the huge alien insect creature who has just swallowed his ray gun. Uh, and he wants to get in there and get his gun back. And so he's standing in front of the, uh, the creature going, eat me, eat me. Now, Jesus may not be shouting that, but he's clearly saying, eat me, eat me. Now, what could he possibly be talking about? The people inside the story in John 6 are offended by the idea that we might munch on Jesus' body and drink his blood. Now, the church has almost forever understood this as meaning 
take communion, right? Isn't that immediately where your brains go to in terms of trying to think about this? Uh, it is a little unclear whether or not John actually wrote this chapter with the idea of the Lord's Supper in mind, uh, because when we get to the part we read this morning, it's pretty clear that he's not thinking about bread and wine. He's thinking about Scripture. He's thinking about Jesus' words, and that we take those in and we begin to digest and eat Jesus' teaching. But let's start with food. Okay, because that's where I always think, right? Think, think, think with your stomach. Um, so what foods do you like? What do you look forward to? What's your, what's your favorite food? Who wants to share? Favorite food? Chocolate. I, I, can, I can go with that. Pizza. I'm with you on hamburgers. Man, hamburgers are, oh, right? That's what we eat at the banquet in the kingdom, or hamburgers. That's what Jesus is going to serve up. Um, I also like omelets. For ethnic, it's definitely Indian or Greek. Okay? So how about if we change that to comfort food? What's your best comfort food? Ice cream, ice cream's always a biggie. The chocolate maybe goes there too. You, you got a double dip on the chocolate. Um, what if you're feeling just a little off? Comfort food is chicken noodle soup? Okay, well for me, the, I, I, probably my, my, my number one favorite comfort food is Ettenman's powdered sugar donuts. Uh, it's hard to beat them. Uh, they make me feel good just about however blue I am. So as Christians, and because we're, we're geared up to think of this eating Jesus as having communion, we have a tendency, I think, that when we think about eating, taking in Jesus, that we understand Jesus to be comfort food, right? Is that, if you're feeling ill... Jesus is meant to be like chicken noodle soup. If you're blue, then Jesus is supposed to be like a donut, make you feel better. So communion is comfort, makes you feel better about life, uh, helps to address any problems you've got. And if we think then about in the liturgy, the words that a pastor can say uh, to invite you to the table, uh, and in my tradition, lots of pastors like to say, taste and see that the Lord is good. Uh, I usually use the words, uh, the gifts of God for the people of God come for the table is prepared. Let's sit down and eat together. But the point's the same, isn't it? Jesus is tasty, comforting food that we will like a lot. And sometimes... Um, perhaps lots of times in our lives, in the circumstances of our lives, uh, when we're in sorrow or loss or we're going through some kind of trouble, this kind of food is exactly what we need, and Jesus is that comfort food for us. But then I thought about this. What happens to me if I only eat comfort food? That's not a pretty story, is it? Uh, a dozen Etman's donuts a day may, may make me feel really happy, but the end result is not, not going to be nice. Comfort food is not what I need on a regular basis. Sometimes I need to eat food I don't like so much, like maybe vegetables. So who here, as a kid, didn't like vegetables? Green beans, Brussels sprouts, ugh, right? So I'm going to guess that I am not the only person here who played the I can sit here longer than you can game with their parents, right? You know the story. Mom says, you're going to sit there until you eat your green beans. And I'm like thinking in my head, I can sit here a long time, Mom, 
We're shifting gears. Did you watch the Bizarre Food Show with Andrew Zimmerman? I mean, that guy goes places and eats stuff I wouldn't touch with a 10-foot pole. So what if sometimes this Jesus we're supposed to eat is less like warm cookies and milk and more like really bitter Brussels sprouts or pickled beets? What if sometimes the gospel, the good news, is disagreeable food more likely to give us heartburn? Now, in the context of John 6, that's actually the entire point. Jesus offers himself as food and drink. And not just the pastors and bishops think this is uncouth. Many of his disciples, those who follow him, find the idea too much to stomach. And John tells us that many of his disciples drew back and no longer followed him. So how could it be that the good news of the kingdom could be hard to swallow? What is it about this Jesus stuff that might make me gag, like green beans when I was six years old? And if we just look at some examples, I think there are actually a lot of ways in which eating Jesus is a bit more like taking my medicine than having an exquisite culinary experience. So what about doing good for and loving people you don't like? What about loving your enemies while they're actively being your enemy? That's the kind of food Jesus dishes up for us in the Sermon on the Mount. How about learning from people you're just pretty certain are got life wrong? What about learning from people, learning about God from people of a different faith? That's the food that gets served up for us in the parable of the Good Samaritan. Some of the other food that Jesus offers us to eat is not to repay evil for evil. Don't you just love to get even? Not to do that, but to repay evil with good. And then Jesus asks us to chew on forgiveness. Forgiveness to people while they're doing us bad. So I... Uh, I like watching Law and Order reruns. I think it's that dunk, dunk thing that just, wow. Uh, so in one episode that always moves me, a mother whose junior high son was murdered, at the end, after the guilty verdict, they're in the sentencing part of the trial, uh, she is allowed to speak to the person who murdered her child. And she says, I have tried to hate you, but I cannot. Instead, what I must do is forgive you. Now, this woman had, in my view, eaten a very big helping of Jesus. Maybe it went down easily for her, but the emotion of the scene suggests otherwise. Such Forgiving those who are doing bad to us is a hard pill to swallow. But it is some of the food that Jesus serves up to us. So if we eat Jesus, digest his words and teachings, sometimes taking Jesus in will be disagreeable food. So dear Jesus, help me eat my vegetables. Amen. Thank you.
Wow, that was a perfect follow-up. Um, so, in thinking about our offerings to the Lord, uh, in thanks, let us consider how we offer ourselves, our time, and our possessions to be used in God's work in our world.
Let us join in the prayers of the people. Ever-present God, fill us with your food. Be with and in us. May we be nurtured by words of life. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for people in lands in drought and with wildfires. Bless and protect those who fight fire. Protect those in the way of danger. Send rain to end drought. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, our world is filled with so much violence. Turn the hearts of people everywhere, on our streets, in our cities, in homes, between nations, to seek peace and harmony. Lord, in your mercy. As schools begin a new year, we pray for teachers, administrators, students in grade schools, middle schools, high schools, and colleges. Bless them in a new year of learning and growth. Help all to be safe and protected from the COVID virus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are ill or whose lives are broken with sorrow and loss. Be with all those who suffer from COVID. Help us to work together to stop its spread. Be with the sick, enable their doctors and nurses, and help us to be encouraging. Especially we lift up the, those whose names are in the bulletin. We pray for those lost in the brokenness of human life. Be their comfort. Help them find help. Help us to be compassionate and caring. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, help us to feed on your words and embrace the challenges of your teaching. Grant us courage to live your vision of the kingdom. We trust all our prayers to your loving kindness and wisdom, and we pray as you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive those our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.